What would Earth be like with no moon? The moon is a pretty significant celestial body to us Earthlings. There is no doubt that the majority of planets in our solar system have at least one moon and some, like Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, have several. But don't be deceived, Earth's moon is unique. Only the moon gives us the impression that we can reach out and touch anything in the night sky. Although it towers over us and consistently cycles through its phases, something odd is occurring to it right now. What is going on with the moon? Why is the moon significant to earthly life? How would Earth be if the moon were absent? Let's find out. The only satellite of the Earth commonly known as the lunar is the moon. And 4.6 billion years ago, it was formed, 30 to 50 million years after the solar system's formation. Our moon rotates almost synchronously with the Earth. It implies that the Earth is constantly facing the same side. Our moon is also far smaller than the moons of Saturn and Jupiter, measuring only 3,475 kilometers in breadth. Our moon is nearly 80 times the volume of Earth, but they are roughly the same age. Moreover, it is a widely held belief that the moon was once a component of our planet and it was formed from a fragment that broke off when a large asteroid struck the Earth when it was still quite young. But what would happen if the moon fell? What if it comes knocking, possibly seeking retribution for the planetary punch that created it? Understanding how orbits function and what precisely keeps the moon nice and steady and where we want it is helpful. The key to flying, according to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, is having the capacity to throw yourself at the ground and miss. In actuality, the Moon is always moving toward Earth. Simply put, because it is traveling so swiftly relative to the Earth's lateral direction, it never quite touches the surface. If you visualize throwing something as hard and quickly as you can and then follow the object's trajectory, you'll notice that it moves away from you while also falling toward the ground. When you throw anything quickly, it travels farther before it lands. Notwithstanding what proponents of the flat Earth theory claim, the Earth is a sphere, and as a result, the ground is gradually descending. There is a speed where the forward velocity of an object coincides with the curvature of the Earth. If you don't slow down, you could fall indefinitely at that speed. Although orbits are slightly more intricate, this is essentially what's going on. The Moon and the Earth are drawn together by gravity, yet they are traveling too quickly to collide. That orbit is secure. The Moon isn't actually in a completely stable orbit because the speed and gravity aren't exactly balanced. The Moon is moving away from the Earth at a rate of about 4 mm per year, which is the exact opposite of the issue that Moonfall describes. That's the trick, then you'll need to significantly slow it down if you want it to strike the Earth anytime soon. What would happen, then, if the Moon slowed down and fell? It would be an unfortunate situation. In the end, there would be an unprecedented mass extinction if the Moon truly did strike the planet. The asteroid that destroyed the dinosaurs and approximately 75% of all life on Earth had a diameter of barely 12 kilometers. That is substantial, but the Moon, which has a diameter of nearly 3,500 kilometers, is far larger. The world would be dead. In addition, all indications that anything had ever existed here would be completely eliminated. Yet, the Roche limit prevents that from happening. The Roche limit is a region where tidal forces outweigh gravitational forces holding two gravitationally linked objects together. In layman's terms, the Moon would disintegrate if it were to approach Earth's surface at a distance of fewer than 11,500 miles, because Earth's gravity would be too strong to hold it together. The Moon's fragments would disperse to create a massive ring system that would be 23,000 miles broad, resembling Saturn's rings. The chunks would gradually shower down on the globe, starting with the smallest ones and concluding with the largest ones, making for a brief moment of beauty. Earth would be at the mercy of an unrelenting hail of moon pebbles crashing onto the surface. The thermal energy would heat up the environment to an unbearable level even if they were small enough to burn up in the atmosphere. There is really no situation in which the moon approaches the Earth sufficiently that it is beneficial to humanity. So even if we want to go visit the moon, 
we really won't want it to come visit us. On the other hand, what if the moon suddenly vanished rather than dropping? Will pandemonium erupt on our globe or would we not care? Although it would initially be difficult to notice the difference, if the moon were to abruptly disappear, like in a sci-fi film, our nights wouldn't only be darker, our entire universe would be fundamentally altered. A post-moon world's most noticeable immediate effects would be minor. Darker night skies would be ideal for anyone with a telescope, even though the absence of any eclipses would be a sad loss. The next brightest object in the sky, Venus, is 14,000 times less brilliant than the full moon. Astronomers would be able to enjoy a clear starry sky throughout the year without the presence of the moon, with the only obstructions being daylight, weather and artificial light pollution. Other prospects might not be as promising. Coral and specific types of crabs, worms and fish can detect the moonlight during specific lunar phases. They use this as a catalyst to begin the reproduction of the entire species. It's uncertain how they would respond if the moon disappeared from the sky permanently. The tides of the ocean would experience a greater immediate impact. Yet we must grasp how tides function in order to comprehend the impact. The gravitational pull that the Earth experiences from the moon and sun causes tides. If we set the sun aside for the time being, the Earth's oceans that face the moon swell up as a result of the moon's gravitational pull creating a high tide. There is a high tide on the side of the Earth that is farthest from the Moon at the same time due to the different gravitational pull of the two sides of the planet. Moreover, there are two low tides in between these two high tides because the ocean is a liquid. These high and low tides travel around the world in 24 hours due to the Earth's rotation. Therefore, Every coastal area sees two high tides and two low tides per day. That is a little more difficult in practice. The periods of high and low tides vary according to the Moon's 27-day orbit around the Earth. Between each high tide, you have to wait 12 hours and 25 minutes. The Sun also has a role to play. While confusingly not always occurring in spring, spring tides are produced when the Sun, Moon and Earth are all in alignment. High tides are a little higher and low tides are a little lower than usual during spring tides. The opposite or neap tides occur when the Sun and Moon are at an angle to one another, when the tides from the Sun partially cancel out the tides from the Moon. Low tides are a little higher and high tides are a little lower than usual. The Earth's tides would be much simpler, but more significantly, considerably weaker without the Moon taking center stage in this image. Animal life would need to adapt quickly without the Moon's tremendous pull on the tides, especially in the intertidal zone. Some species flourish in the intertidal zone, a narrow area that lies between the natural communities of the water and the land. This band would become more congested and at risk of extinction as a result of weaker tides. Much more significant are the tides for other animals. The California grunion fish and several species of sea turtles, for instance, would perish if the moon disappeared because they have evolved to be extremely sensitive to rising and falling tides. In order to offer their young the best chance of survival, they lay their eggs in the sand and time their hatching to coincide with the tides. Without the Moon's assistance, this system would disintegrate. Weaker tides from a human perspective would make it more challenging to fish for marine life that resides on or around the beach, because these species migrate in accordance with the tide's movements. Moreover, surfing as a sport might be eliminated. Surfers closely monitor the tide timings even though they depend on breaking waves for their amusement, which are caused by the interaction of the wind and waves at the beach. This is so because a lot of surfers believe that an incoming tide causes more water to be pushed toward the beach, creating bigger waves. These surfers were only lately shown to be accurate regarding this phenomenon. So now we are aware that big wave surfing will disappear in a world without the moon. The night sky would be filled with a lot more stars if the moon were to vanish. Humans may recognize and give new constellation names. It might be simpler to glimpse other planets or perhaps other galaxies. Yet, it would be much darker at night. 
Although it would affect people as they walk around after dark, nocturnal creatures would be far more affected. It would be far more difficult for animals that hunt at night, such as owls and bats, to locate food. The fact that there wouldn't be any more eclipses without the moon is a clear difference. Of course, there would be no more flights to the moon, and perhaps there wouldn't have been space exploration at all. According to several scientists, the moon serves as an astronaut's stepping stone to other solar system locations. Without it, it's possible that humanity would not have learned how to leave Earth's atmosphere. Therefore, eliminating the moon would certainly have some immediate positive, negative and ugly implications, but it wouldn't be very catastrophic. Destabilizing the Earth's rotation would have the most effect, but it would take time to become apparent. The tilt of the Earth's axis in relation to our orbit around the Sun is currently 23.4 degrees. Yet there is a tiny sway in this spin cycle. It wobbles, like a spinning top does, causing the tip to gently trace a circle as it rotates quickly around. It takes the Earth approximately 26,000 years to complete one full rotation. With merely a 2.4 degree shift in the Earth's axis, it is also very mild. Yet this wobble would become unpredictable and intense without the Moon to stabilize it. On occasion, the Earth's axis would be perpendicular to the Earth's orbit of the Sun, pointing straight up and down. Seasons would no longer exist in this situation, and day and night would always be of equal length. With respect to its orbit around the Sun, the Earth would occasionally tilt completely over and lie on its side. As a result, the equator would be bitterly cold, and the poles would be scorching hot. In essence, eliminating the Moon would cause a drastic change in the environment. Every few thousand years, ice ages would occur in various parts of the Earth with enormous variations in temperature and sunshine. Given everything, we'd say that the Earth is fortunate to have a moon. What do you think? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.